بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط ال صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا مولانا محمد تب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبسار وديائها وعلى آله وسهبه دائما أبدا صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله رمضان مبارك في عباري um, you know, Last week we started talking about Ramadan and the emphasis on it and you know pretty much whoever has been coming here regularly realizes that the emphasis on everything is our focus on the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so when we look at Ramadan you know and the way we fast it's not the same as the previous nations fasted uh, even though the verse says that it's ordained upon you as it was ordained upon the previous nations you know and the verse that changed all of this or the last three verses of, of related to Ramadan in the Quran are what changed this. And we talked about why that happened. And this is where Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with Audhu Billah min Shaitan Rajim. Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi, anni fa inni qari. Ujibu da'wa tadda idha da'an, fal yastajibu li, wal yu'minu bi, la'allakum yarushudun. And when it asks, addressing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and when my slaves ask you, regarding me or about me then I am close so if they don't ask you I'm not close but when they come to you that's what triggers that closeness because Allah is close to the ones that love his beloved and so that and I listen to their supplications whenever they ask so for those who are constantly connected with Rasulullah so some Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly responds to their supplications. So they should obey me and believe in me. If and then you know, perhaps they will be or that's what will cause them to be rightly guided. So this is the verse. The purpose of Ramadan, as we mentioned last week, is to attain taqwa. Because in the beginning, right at the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Ya ayu ladhina amanu, O you who believe. Kutiba alaykum usiyamu, kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattakun. You know, fasting is prescribed for you, again, as it was prescribed before, that you may attain taqwa. And we're going to come back to this point. As to what true taqwa is because taqwa is something that we all should be striving for you know and there are various definitions of taqwa you know various people define it in various ways but we're going to talk about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself states is the reality of taqwa you know? and all the other you know where you know you have narrations through Abu Bakr Siddiq and all various other companions and various other people all of them have are correct as far as aspects of taqwa. But then he also emphasizes that this is also the month of the Quran. And which is kind of interesting because you know, I was reading uh, an advertisement uh, a few Ramadan back where you know, this certain people were having this celebration after Ramadan. After the Eid, they were having another celebration, a gathering. Oh, let's celebrate the coming of the Quran. This is the month of the Quran. We should celebrate the Quran. Which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, with the exception that these are the same people that when you celebrate the coming of the one who brought the Quran, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then they have issues with that. 
you know, so no issues celebrating the Quran, but then celebrating the one who brought it, that becomes an issue for them. So, but if you look at everything that we do as Muslims, or rather everything that we should do as Muslims, you know, we do everything, and most people will admit, okay, we do everything for the pleasure of Allah. True Muslims do everything for the pleasure of Allah and His Messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything for the pleasure of His beloved. And He states this clearly in the Quran in multiple ways. Now, if we look even at our Qibla, why do we face Mecca when we make Salat? Why is the Kaaba our Qibla? Before it was Masjid al-Aqsa. Why the change? In Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us why he changed it. When he's, when he's addressing his beloved, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ That truly we see your sight moving in the heavens. فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا and soon we will change you to a qibla that pleases you. So even the qibla itself that we face is our qibla because of the pleasure of Rasulullah. The same way when we look at the Quran itself, you know, as I stated last week, all the other books were sent down at once. All at once. All the other previous books, you know, whether it's the Zabur or the Torah or the Injil or the various booklets that were given to Ibrahim al-Islam and the various other prophets, you know, Allah called them and here it is. Yeah. Yet the Quran comes down piece by piece. And even the, the disbelievers of the time, they understood that there was a difference here. They had, they had the knowledge to know that all these previous books came down all at once. Why is this book coming down piece by piece? And they questioned it. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He mentions this question of theirs. And the question wasn't so much just a question of asking, but this was more you know, of an objection. So he mentions the objection in Surah Farqan, Surah number 25, verse number 32. And the disbelievers ask, why is this Quran not sent down all at once? But, you know, there's an interesting point here. Uh, you know, if you look at the, the verse, it starts off, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already states that they are kafir. For objection, for objecting to something about his beloved. So anyone who has any objections to Rasulullah s.a.w. He automatically falls into that category of kafir, disbeliever. And then he answers them, though. You know, if you read the rest of the verse, you know, the first verse is, part of the verse is, okay, they ask this. This is their objection. That why isn't this Quran you know, sent down all at once, like all the other books were sent all, all at once? Why is it coming down part, you know, part by part, verse by verse? He says, no. Allah says, thus that we may strengthen your heart. This is for your pleasure that I'm sending it down piece by piece. Why? What's the pleasure in that? And this is where we, we forget what the Quran is. The Quran is a conversation between Allah and His beloved. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
And when we look in the Quran itself in Surah Taha, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he asked Musa Islam, he says, Wama tilke bayaminika ya Musa. O oh Moses, what is in your right hand? Or rather, what is in your right hand, O oh Moses? Al-Islam. Musa al-Islam could, could have simply had said, Oh, this is my asa. This is my staff. But what does he say? He says, This is my staff, and upon it I lean. And I knock down the fodder for the, for the animals. And I do many other things with it. You know, it's not just limited to this. There are other things I can keep up going. So many things I do with it. Why? I mean, he could have, again, he could have simply said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows what's in his hand. And he knows. Musa Islam knows that Allah knows. But there's so much enjoyment with having this conversation with his Lord that he doesn't want it to end. So he keeps going. You know, it's like you give, give a child a, 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 a lollipop. Many of them, you know, they take one bite and it's done with. Right? The smart one, he knows, okay, this is the only one I'm getting. So now he savors that flavor. Yeah. Slowly. So for the, the rule, the general rule is that the books are revealed all at once. But every rule can be changed for the pleasure of the Beloved. So the same way with the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of sending it all at once, piece by piece, let this conversation continue on. Now coming back to taqwa. You know, taqwa, you know, if I take a general definition of taqwa, you know, it's the fear of Allah. And the reality of the fear is that you fear to do anything that displeases Him. This is taqwa, in a nutshell. Fasting teaches us taqwa, because it keeps reminding us of Allah. You know, you think about what's, you know, the fast, how do we fast? You know, we get up in the morning, we eat. Why? Because this is the sunnah of Rasulullah. Then throughout the day, from dawn until sunset, no eating, no drinking, you know, no association with, with your spouse. These are the general things. And if you look at these things, these are basic instincts. You, know, you get hungry, oh, go eat. I get thirsty, I drink. You know, and, and, and most of these times, we don't even think about it. You, know, you just do it. Oh, I'm thirsty, I just drink some water. Just instinctive. And yet, when we fast, we have to break that. So now when I get thirsty, I suddenly remember, oh, I'm fasting. And if I truly understand what I'm, who I'm doing this for, then I'm reminded of Allah. But I'm also reminded of Rasulullah. Because again, the way we fast is different. For His pleasure. Allah Subhanahu why did Allah Subhanahu change the way we fast? For the pleasure of Rasulullah. Because of Rasulullah's love for Umar. Radiallahu and so that no one can blame Omar for having done anything wrong, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala changed the way everybody fast. Not just say, "Oh, Omar, you know, is forgiven for this." No, change the way everyone does it. But also, you know, when we're fasting, if we start arguing, you know, we start uh, backbiting. All these things that people do without thinking. Or rather, most people do without thinking. 
Now again, oh, I'm fasting. I shouldn't be doing this. This violates my fast. So it makes us conscious of Allah. Even like when we're making salat. You know, again, this goes back to the connection with the Rasulullah. So, so. You know, after Iman, Iman is what? Iman is, true Iman is the love of Allah and His Messenger. It's not simply the lip service of saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Because, yeah, the lips have to say it, or rather the lips say it, but the heart has to testify to it. But Rasulullah Sallallahu said, what about the Salat? He said, pray as you see me, pray. He didn't say make Salat like I make Salat, because no one can make Salat like he made Salat. That would be a burden that we can't bear. He said, make Salat as you see me making Salat. So even in Salat, we are constantly reminded of him. Because if I'm truly making Salat, then when I stand up, I stand up and I think, ah, I'm standing like this because the Rasulullah system stood like this. When I go into Ruku, again, if I'm truly making Salat, I should be thinking, oh, I'm making Ruku this way because the Rasulullah system made Ruku this way. The same thing for the Sajda, same thing for, you know, when I'm uh, Jalsa, when I'm sitting, every aspect of the Salat as I'm going through it. Yes, I'm praying or I'm making Salat for Allah, but I'm constantly reminded of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I'm worshipping my Lord, but He is having me remember the one that He loves. So now, again, the purpose of, of fasting is to attain what? Taqwa. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala defines true taqwa. I mean, you know, again, taqwa, you can have different levels of taqwa. You know, I see somebody praying and being honest, and I say, oh yeah, he's very, you know, he has, he's muttaqi, he has taqwa. But I don't know what's in his heart. You know, the Sahaba Quran, they used to say that during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu even the hypocrites wouldn't miss a salat behind him. Because otherwise it would be known who that is. Oh, he's a hypocrite. I mean, they're praying behind Rasulullah Sallallahu himself. The physical actions are all exactly like they should be. But what's in the heart is something different. In Surah Hujrat, Surah number 49, which is also known as Surah Adab, Hujrat means the household or the, uh, the, the room, referring to the, the, the room of Rasulullah you know, his houses, or the houses of his wives were one room, the whole house. Roughly nine feet by fourteen feet. That was it. That was the kitchen, the bedroom, the living room, the dining room. And the, the bathroom, so you would go outside. But that was the house. So that's why this, this surah is referred to as Surah Hujrat, because it, it speaks about that, or mentions that, when, when the Bedouins came and started yelling. But it's known as Surah Adab, the respect. You know, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us the etiquettes of His beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how to deal and think about and approach His beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which is also interesting because normally, like you know, if you go to meet someone, someone big, the 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 lower one on the on the totem pole is the one who tells you, oh, when you go, this is how you respect him, and this this is the etiquette of going in and doing this. Here, the master, the owner, the creator of the universe, is teaching us the etiquettes of his beloved, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the verse starts off, or the surah starts off. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين أيديهم لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله 
Inna Allah Samiun Alim. O you who believe, those who say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. It's not addressing the Christians, not the Jews, not you know, not the Mushrikeen of, of Makkah, nobody else. It's addressing all of those who claim to be the followers of Rasulullah. Do not go ahead of Allah and His Messenger. Or do not place yourself before or forward of Allah and His Messenger. And fear Allah. Inna Allah Samiun Alim. That He is hearing and seeing. I mean, He is hearing and knowing. He doesn't say seeing and knowing. So this going ahead, you know, it's like when we talk about him, we place ourselves before him as we talk about him. So Allah is hearing and knowing. And then the next verse, Ya yuladina amanu, la tarfu aswata fawqa sawth in nabiyya, wa la tajharu lahu bil qawli qajahri ba'adikum li ba'adin an tahbata amalikum wa lakin la tashurun. O you who believe, do not raise your voices above the voice of the Messenger, above the voice of the Prophet, and do not talk to him like you talk to one another, which also implies don't talk about him like you talk about each other. And then the warning, otherwise I will wipe away your deeds. And you won't even know it. There will be no perception of that your deeds are wiped away. You think, oh, I'm becoming more pious because I'm reading the Quran more. And now, you know, I didn't get up in tahajjud before, but now I'm getting up in tahajjud. My beard has grown another two inches. You know, for many people, you know, they think their whole piety is in their, the length of their beard. You know, I'm giving more in charity. And of course, I'm posting everything on YouTube so everybody else knows, but yeah, I'm giving more in charity. And all of these other things. So you think, oh yeah, I'm more pious now. And yet, yet everything's already wiped away. And there's no chance for Thoba either. Because there's no acknowledgement of having done anything wrong. And then the, the next verse, verse number three. Inna ladina yuguduna aswatam. Inna ladina yuguduna fawq. Inna ladina yuguduna aswatam fawqa sawthin nabiyya. Inna ladina yuguduna aswatam. 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 Inna ladina And those who lower their voices before the Messenger. Meaning what? Meaning they humble themselves before the Messenger. These are the ones whose hearts have been tested by Allah for taqwa. And for them is forgiveness and a great reward. So if I look at this verse, you know, whose hearts have been tested for taqwa, whose hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has certified that these are the people of taqwa. And when I look at the verse of, of, uh, of Ramadan, that the purpose of Ramadan is to attain taqwa, then that means that the whole purpose of Ramadan is that I humble myself before the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That I learned to do that. This is the whole purpose of this month. And if I can't do that, then I've gone through this whole exercise of staying hungry and thirsty and all of these other things. For what? For nothing. Other than, yeah, I've stayed hungry and thirsty. <laughs> And if you ask anybody, oh, do you want to stay hungry and thirsty? And say, no. So the purpose of Ramadan is not staying hungry and thirsty. 
the purpose of Ramadan is to attain taqwa. And taqwa of the heart is to humble yourself before Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Before the beloved of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is, I mean, again, this is the whole purpose of this whole month. You know, even when we're reading the Quran, You know, we, and even if we don't understand the meaning of what we're reading, we should understand that this is the word of Allah that was sent down to His beloved, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and sent down in a fa in a manner that the beloved preferred it to be sent down in. And this is, you know, this is it. You know, I'll end here. There's, there's a lot more. You know, the other thing, you know, if you start looking at the month of Ramadan, so many things happened this month. You know, the, on the first of Ramadan, the birth of Sayyid Abdul Qadir Jilani. You know, on the third of Ramadan, in the passing, of the, the leader of the women of Jannah, the daughter of Rasulullah so Bibi Fatima, salami Also on the third of Ramadan, the passing of Bibi Umm Salma, the mother of the believers, the wife of Rasulullah so She's the one who Rasulullah so gave the sand of Karbala to. And of course, not the same years. These are different years, but uh, the 19th of Ramadan, the 17th of Ramadan is the Battle of Badr. The 19th of Ramadan, Ali Radio is attacked. On the 21st is when he passed, when he is martyred from the wounds that should have, that would have killed anybody else on the spot. As, I mean, there's on and on and on. So there's, there are a lot of connections that Ramadan has. And if you start looking at the ones that Rasulullah loves, you know, those connections are, are very, uh, you know, like, like fingers spreading out all over. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand the purpose of this month and to attain the purpose of this month, inshallah. And may He fill our hearts with His love and the love of His beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, His family, His companions, and all of those whom they will love, inshallah.